those spots, try to squeeze the last dollar out of your pocket? Well, not here in Baraboo. They know, just like the old circuses did, that their attraction draws families from every economic level. So, right across the street from the Circus World Museum, they've got a park with picnic tables. And there's several other parks for vacationers to enjoy. And keep a few of those hard-earned dollars in your pocket. Okay, so Roger the Clown here at Circus World Museum, he's got me thinking. If you're gonna call yourself the circus capital of the world, you gotta have clowns. You've got to have lots and lots of clowns. Where does Baraboo keep the clowns? That looks like a good spot. The International Clown Hall of Fame. Maybe they're in there. The International Clown Hall of Fame um, houses the largest collection of clown artifacts in the world. Some of the most amazing uh, artifacts and props and costumes and photographs and films and videos and slides and and just mementos of some of these great performers careers we're dedicated our mission is to preserve and interpret and present to future generations the history of clowning just how long can clown history be i mean the big circuses in the united states only got started in the early 1900s i don't think there's a society or a culture that doesn't have a clown character or a clown figure in it, whether it's uh, Native Americans, the, the Kachinas, or uh, the, the Victorian, like the uh, Edwardian clowns, they had the jesters for the kings, the Romans, that the, you know, th there was all sorts of, there's always a clown character in history. When you're here and see all the artifacts, you realize there's a long timeline when it comes to clown history. Plus, they cover all types of clowns and clowning. It's not just circus clowns, it's vaudeville, rodeo, ice show, TV, film, uh, uh, clowns that work in hospitals, caring clowns, Christian clowns, birthday party, uh, hometown clowns. But that doesn't mean you won't see the big names that everybody recognizes. Most of the big household names in clowning have had their costumes and equipment donated to the Hall of Fame here in Baraboo. These people are generally known for, they have a national or an international recognition. You would recognize either their face or their name or their work. Uh, through the, they, they've done it for so long that this is, they're standing out in their field. People like Emmett Kelly, uh, Lou Jacobs, who was a very famous Ringling Brothers and Barnabilly clown, worked on the show for 66 years, on the Ringling Brothers and Barnabilly show for 66 years. Uh, Red Skelton. Another one of the, one of the one of our first inductees, and a lot of people say, "Well, was Red Skelton really a clown?" I mean, he was on television mostly, but it, when you learn his story, his father was a circus clown on the Hagen Banger Wallace Circus. Red ran away when he was 16 and joined that circus as a clown. One of his main clown characters was known as Freddy the Freeloader, which is a very you know very uh, like a character clown, a tramp clown, and it was sort of done as a homage to his dad. People who know a little about Red Skelton know that he spent his later years creating some really amazing pieces of art, especially oil paintings. And the Hall of Fame was given some of those pieces, too. Anybody want to take a guess on who this famous TV redhead is that sat for Red to paint? She's done many a clown characters during her long career. Now, here's a shocker. I know I've got some uncles who were pretty funny at weddings and even a few funerals, but I never thought I might have a distant relative here in the Clown Hall of Fame. We have a, a, a little car from a very famous clown called Chester Barnett. He was known as Bobo the Clown, Bobo Barnett. And he has a miniature car, and he did a comedy dog act, one of the, one of the most known clowns in the 50s and 60s, did this act twice on the Ed Sullivan Show. Uh, he was one of the highest paid clowns of his time, and he did a comedy dog act. Uh, he was a big man. He was 6'2". He weighed about 240. And he got into this little car with six dogs, a skunk, a trumpet, and a suitcase. Because they have so many treasures in their collection, they can only put so many on display at a time. But there's always thousands of things to see, and it's always a different experience, no matter when you visit. Now, in regards to this claim that Baraboo is the circus capital of the world, well, Greg made another comment that makes me think it might be true. Fourth grade in Wisconsin, they do a circus unit, so uh, they learn about the great circuses that, that wintered here in Wisconsin. 
And in all of Wisconsin, where were the four biggest and longest running circuses based? Right here in Baraboo. Well, even though Baraboo has had a big impact on the world of entertainment, circus entertainment that is, the town itself really isn't very big. Even today, there's only a little over 12,000 people here. So when you walk around town, you notice something a little odd. Beautiful, but odd. The local theater here is just a little too big and a little too fancy for a town this size. And it's got a famous name etched in stone, Al Ringling. We grabbed Beth Rosman, the assistant director of the theater, to give us the scoop. Beth, tell me a little history about the Al Ringling Theater. Uh, the theater was built in 1915 by Mr. Al Ringling himself, the impresario of the Ringling Brothers Circus. Uh, there were five circus-minded brothers in that family, and they started their circus here in Baraboo. Um, in his later years, Al had obviously become a millionaire, and, you know, back then... A lot of money in those days. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, he decided to give a gift back to the city of Baraboo, mm -hmm. which had been so kind to him and his brothers financially as well as supportive. Mm -hmm. And so he built this amazing, majestic theater, European-style theater, for this small town in Wisconsin. Ringling knew he wanted something special, not just your average box with a stage. Well, it's actually modeled after the Opera House at the Palace of Versailles. The Wrap and Wrap architects were the, the premier theater builders at the time, and this theater was known as America's prettiest playhouse, and the Wrap and Wrap design firm went on to design most of the movie palaces in the United States. But, but they started here. This was really the first one. The Theater Historical Society of America puts it this way, it is the earliest that can accurately be called a movie palace. And that's a quote. And it really is like a palace on the inside. Box seats, beautiful artwork. It seems Mr. Ringling had timed the construction just right. And there was a lot of uh, labor uh, from the World's Fair in Chicago. There were a lot of craftsmen who mm -hmm. needed work and came here to the theater. There's a story about one of the craftsmen, the guy who painted the fire curtain, who maybe didn't live to see the finished product. There's some speculation that uh, th the man who painted it may have passed away, or they were just in a hurry to get the theater open. Why is that? Uh, it's, you look at the design and there are boats with courtiers serenading Marie Antoinette at Versailles, um, but the back of the boat is unfinished. There is no back to the boat. <laughs> or maybe it was a sight gag in one of the famous vaudeville shows that performed here early on. Actually, they've got several stories about the fire curtain. Another feature of it is uh, the grommet holes where the manager, house manager, would look out at the audience to see if they were ready. Um, it has grease stains on it, and that's because back in the day, uh, gentlemen used to grease their mustache and their beard and their hair. And so when he was peeking out, <laughs> it stained the grommet holes. And that stain is still there today. Something that's here today but wasn't part of the original building, it actually arrived about a dozen years later, is what's lovingly referred to as the Mighty Barton. It's a 1928 Barton theater organ uh, built right here in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Uh, it was brought in to aid the silent pictures at the time. Okay, now hold on to your red velvet theater seats. Guess what Al Ringling spent on this whole thing back in 1915? A little hint, nowadays it wouldn't even buy the organ. This is unbelievable today. The theater cost about $100,000 to build. That's correct. That makes me wonder how much Al Ringling spent on his house, just right around the corner from the theater. Well, it's time for me to hit the road again. I've learned a lot of things about the Baraboo area. The biggest one is they have every right in the world to refer to themselves as the circus capital of the world. Hey, till next time, I'm Jim Barnett. Gotta go.
If you have a destination idea for Jim or you want to check out other episodes of Jim Barnett's Gotta Go, head to jimbarnett.tv. I love to travel, but there's no place like home. Hello, Peoria. 